we're super excited to release and publish this special episode. It's our top 10 Hit Better Plan episodes from 2022. If you enjoy the content, head to the show notes where we've posted the links to the full episodes. Let's go. These are the four topics that I'll present on today. So leadership, um, definitely a firm believer that everyone is a leader um, and you'll have your own way of leading. Um, and we'll just go into some qualities around leadership in what I've noticed that good leaders do well uh, in sports performance. Perspective, um, I think this is a really important topic at the moment uh, for those experiencing lockdown and, and uh, you may have found your, pers- your sp- perspective, your outlook on life has changed since the start of the year because there's been some conditional changes to our environment that's been out of our control. So I think perspective is a good thing to um, look into um, this year and, and we've all had different experiences with that. Uh, confidence will be um, one that we'll look at. So performance pop confidence as well as um, self-confidence. And it should be four. I've doubled up there. Um, so number four will be mindset. Uh, we'll finish on mindset and some different strategies that you can do to improve your mindset in different conditions, particularly challenging conditions um, and focusing on areas that you can control to keep your mindset um, in check and then and helping you to perform rather than um, working against you. So starting with leadership, a big topic Um, at the moment and I saw the resilience project which for those that are on social media if you're interested in in this space vulnerability check out the resilience project we were lucky enough to have one of the guys work with um, the Hawthorne Football Club um, over the last year and we did some work with the resilience project another one of their staff has been working with Port Adelaide and he did a post last night about vulnerability and the fact that they really embraced vulnerability this year amongst the group Um, Richmond's been strong in this space and they've probably led from the front. Ash Barty as well has been really big on this space. So a lot of elite athletes now are are, um, and leaders in different facets, whether it be CEOs, um, businesses, um, so finance or sport, anywhere where there's performance. um, We're starting to embrace vulnerability now as a strength. um, And ultimately the easiest way to sort of think about vulnerability if you if you think about your closest friends or family it's usually the little quirks that we have that we know about each other that grows us stronger so all the little things that not everyone knows about each other but only those closest to you you know that's that's a strong bond that you have with your family and your friends Um, and that and part of that is vulnerability opening up with those people and having that trust um, with the with the relationships that you have that you're safe to share everything about you And, and that's a special space to have and that's ultimately what good culture is about is having that psychological safety to feel that you can open up to your peers um, and whether it be talking about things you know things that you're curious about or um, areas that you're um, that you've always um, sort of found difficult to take on so areas that you're sort of opening up that are challenging for you whether it be skills training um, mental side, whatever it might be, diet, lifestyle, um, being able to open up and, and talk about the challenges you have. Obviously, the opposite of that is feeling that you have to um, be someone that you're not and you have to try and fit in. So there's a big difference between fitting in uh, opposed to belonging. Reflection on last week. If you missed last week's episode, just let me know. I will send you the link. Um, but basically, we discussed uh, the program and the importance of having low, medium and high days. So easy, feel-good sessions are our low days. Medium sessions where we're focusing on getting in some good training low, but we're not pushing maximally uh, or we're not you know, running too far or doing maximal sprints. It's a, it's a medium session. And then the, the importance of high days where we're pushing your thresholds, whether it be sprinting at max effort, doing hard accelerations, change of direction, or maybe you're getting game loads out with your, with your threshold work, so 10K sessions uh, and so forth. So the importance that we've got a balance of all three. All right, so part of today's presentation is around the importance of focusing on not doing the quick wins, the easy wins, um, but actually focusing on the hard work to help you win later. So sometimes the quick wins uh, are easy. They're generally in your comfort zone. 
they might help you feel good now, but they're not going to help you and be the best that you can be later on. All right. And a good quote from Muhammad Ali would be, I hated every minute of training, but I said, don't quit, suffer now and live the rest of your life as a champion. So that's a good quote relevant to this topic where although he didn't love training because he was pushing himself and working himself um, so hard, but he was doing it to allow himself to live the rest of his life as a champion. He was looking after his future self. And that's what hard work looks like. In, on that note of, of hard work, we're, we're starting to get to the point now where we want to start ramping up our training loads. So there will be some bigger sessions over the next couple of weeks. Um, for some of you that just joined our program, you'll notice your training program will be relatively easy. That's just because we're building up your body. Um, and for some of you that have been started your preseason a little bit earlier, you'll notice now we're having a main session of the week. So we have those high sessions have already started for you. Um, but hard work pays dividends when we do it consistently. So now that we know what hard work looks like, it's doing the things that we might not feel like doing, but we know we do them anyway because we know they're important for our future self to win later. We want to make sure that we do those at a consistent basis. And when we do them consistently, that's when it pays dividends. So sometimes our motivation will drop because we do the, we do the hard work, we do it for a couple of weeks, but we don't get immediate results. We don't get that immediate feedback of maybe getting better at that task. Um, stick with it. Trust that that hard work will give back. And when it does give back, it may, it may surprise you how much it gives back when you stick at it. Okay, so getting into speed. Um, like I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, I did my level three course from Renelle, who runs a business called Academy Sports Speed, um, is an expert in this area. And she ran us through a few lectures. Um, and I'm going to share uh, a basic uh, synopsis of what she did so if you're interested in in this topic make sure to check out her business academy sports page she's got a um, I'm pretty sure instagram but definitely a social media presence or, and she pro posts a lot of uh, content as well so make sure to check it out but what we want to think about now with speed is your ability to um, generate force at a fast rate so we know it's particularly for a running sport like football, um, we want to make sure we're able to do this into the ground. So it's known as ground reaction forces. In terms of understanding the muscles for speed training, the thick muscle groups like the glutes are better at producing strength. So for your squat and your deadlift, they're going to be really favorable. So your glutes, which is at the back of your uh, hips, um, where your long muscles like the rectus femoris, which is your quads, uh, and your uh, hamstrings are more going to be focused on speed training. All right, so we want to try our exercise in terms of your hamstring. We want to make sure we're developing your long muscles to help you produce that force. In terms of your uh, gastric nemius, which is your calf, that's got a balance between the two. All right, so we want to make sure that we're developing your calves and they will work a lot with sprinting and particularly around acceleration. And then when we're running more at high speeds, our hamstrings will, will take a fair bit of the load. So your rectus femoris will work a lot more. Max velocity, we've got five roles of hamstrings when it, of, uh, when it comes to running. So the ability to generate force and push into the ground. A third of that will come from the hamstrings. Control the swing of the uh, lower leg. So that recovery phase where the leg's coming through. The hamstrings can uh, have a fair bit to play with that and transmit energy into the gastrocnemius, into your calf. So before the foot hits the ground, the hamstrings are transmitting that uh, work into the, into the calf, stabilizing the knee from collapsing under the body weight at impact and becoming more active, maintaining running form as we fatigue the hamstrings work a lot more. So hamstrings are critical. We want to make sure we're strengthening them and we're exposing them regularly to high speed. Measuring tools that you can use for your speed training. We've got uh, your smart watches, which are, which are quite accurate when it comes to uh, slow running and jogging. So your distances for more like when we do fartlek and interval based work. But when it comes to speed training, in my experience and working with athletes that have the Garmin or the Apple watch, the max velocity that it shows is, is um, not very reliable. It can be um, off by a long way, a good 30, 40%. So 
I tend to not recommend um, using your Garmin or your Apple Watch when tracking your, your sprint speed sessions. Okay, over to this week. So like I mentioned, it's that time of year where we just want to see where you're at with your 2K. It's not a performance 2K time trial, but it's just to see where you're at so we can give you some targets that are specific to you in the, in the program. Um, so when we're running our 30 second efforts, we can give you, we can look at your 2K time trial, break it down and see what, um, what distance you should get in those 30 second efforts, 60 seconds, three minutes and those sort of things. So it allows us to have smart training when we're not just get, doing guesswork. Um, so this 2K time trial is really, really important that you push yourself to your max, you get your best time. Um, so then we can look at that data and, and give you an appropriate program for where you, how fit you are, as well as set some, some goals. Um, like we want to try and get at least uh, 5% better over this preseason with your 2K time trial uh, and hopefully even a little bit more. So 5% for someone with a seven minute 2K is, is around that 20 seconds. So it's still significant. Um, so we want to make sure we're, we're having those goals and we've got targets that are specific to you, but also we're managing your body. It's not like you're trying to hit a 200 meters in 40 seconds where someone with a a much stronger 2k that's what they should be hitting you know for you it might be uh, 150 meters is appropriate for your fitness uh, to get to get to where you need to go um, so it's also a good form of of injury management as well as performance um, and from in terms of pacing if you've just run your 2k over the weekend you want to reflect on the type of strategy that you brought to that race did you run your own race um, i've seen over time and time again athletes get carried away and they compete too early in a 2k uh, it's very different to the 20 meter the 20 meter is is all in from the get-go because uh, it's an anaerobic test same with the vertical jump um, but the yo-yos the endurance based um, events like the 2k is more about pacing um, so you need to pick a strategy that suits you you'll have like i mentioned earlier some your more cal awards those aerobic athletes that aren't super super fast but they can run at their uh, at a high speed for them, um, you know, for a long period of time. So they're grinders, they're workhorses, they can hold a good pace. So for them, typically a good strategy is to start at a solid pace, lap one, and hold on. And for others that are um, more power-based athletes, if they try and stay with the Callum Ward and go hard early, they're going to burn out and they won't be able to actually um, reach their best potential because they'll blow up too early in the race. And I'm sure we've all felt that where we blow up We've gone out too, too, too hard too early and now we're, we're going to get a, a score that we definitely was not our best for that day. The pacing affected our ability to get our best score. So this week we'll discuss our four different programs that we have for Christmas. So if you're on the online program or you're on the individualised program, you'll have this individual, or you'll have this um, category of, of program that you fall under. Um, and it's basically a development program. So for those that are in our development program, we're not so much focused on high performance sport right now. It's more about the fundamentals and education and building good technique and getting the basics right um, so to prepare you to be able to handle high performance sport later on. Then we've got our gainers guys. So these are, these are players that we've identified that need to build body armor, so put on muscle mass over the Christmas period, um, whether a coach has identified that because maybe they're gonna change a position from an outside mid to an inside mid, or simply they've gone from junior football now to playing their first senior year of footy, um, or they're just simply a, a naturally um, more lean and skinny type of body, and we need to put work into put um, working on their um, bulk. Then we've got our maintainers. So these guys, it might be because you're uh, at the later stage of your career and we want to prolong every uh, prolong your career. So make sure we're not putting on too much muscle, we're not gaining too much fat, we're just trying to maintain your body weight. Um, or you're just in your peak shape, you've been putting work into your body composition and for you over Christmas, just simply maintaining it. We don't want to um, get carried away and eat too much and put on body fat. Um, you've found your ideal weight for this time of year and you just your goal is to just simply stay at that weight and then we have our reduced category so for those that need to lose excess weight i.e fat um, we want to have the same sort of, a, of a focus as the gainers where we don't want to reduce too much more than 500 grams per week to make it sustainable there's no point losing four kilos in a month if you put it all back on in the next month so it's all about sustainability and, and really we're working back from where do we want to be come March practice match mode. 
So take your time with it. As I mentioned, this week's power tip, it will be on weekly preparation. Um, and that really does start from when your game finishes. That's when we want to get into that recovery mode. So um, it's the day where you're going to be most aroused from, um, and you're going to want to try and relax the nervous system as much as we can. So by getting into an ice bath, that can be an effective method. Method By getting a, a flush massage, so not deep tissue, but just uh, an easy flush. Uh, foam rolling, static stretching, kicking the legs up along the wall and sitting down, uh, doing some mindfulness, anything that you can do to try and relax the mind, going into a pool to do some walkthroughs, um, gentle mobility work. All these things are designed around slowing down and slowing down our nervous system, um, which ultimately is going to influence how well we sleep at night that night. And that's where we get our um, bang for buck in terms of recovery. So that's really, really critical, and that's how we want to start our preparation for the next game is by recovering really well from the game that's just occurred. From there, you want to choose a method that you know works for you, and practice matches for those that have them this week uh, are a great opportunity to try some different methods. So you might have done ice baths before, but you've never done hot, cold. So going contrast methods before we go three minutes in the ice bath then three minutes sauna or three minutes spa and vice versa. Obviously, make sure you haven't got any corkies, otherwise you can cause some extra bleed or muscle strains because you can cause actually bleeding with the heat. Um, but if you're healthy and you've just finished the game, uh, contrast bathing can be a really good way to get that relaxation effect. Um, and not only that, take into account the game that you played. So did you play a crash and bash, lots of contact and the body swollen and bruised, therefore ice would be really, really effective? Or did you play a high intensity, it was a beautiful weather, and you played an outside game where you did lots of high speed running sprint distance, therefore you might want to flush the legs, so massage and spinning the legs over for a walk or pool or bike uh, might be a really good way just to help promote blood flow and help the muscles recover. So think of the game that you played and that will, should influence the recovery method that you use. Then from there, we want to start preparing for the next game. So from a long-term athlete development point of view, make sure you're getting your upper body strength work in early in the week. Uh, we also want to lift heavy uh, early in the week with your squat um, movement. Uh, so your bilateral, whether you're doing a trap bar squat or a, or a box squat or whatever it might be, whatever your max lift is that you did over preseason, that's when we want to lift heavy in the week. And then as the week progresses, we want to, from a physical point of view, we want to increase the speed that we move. So you move slow and heavy early in the week from a strength point of view, and then we move fast in our speed work. So you might do some strides if you need to, or you just train with high intensity on the on your main session of the week for the back end of the week, so on the Thursday. Um, in terms of preparation for the week ahead, work back from the game. So are you playing on a Friday, are you playing on a Saturday, are you playing on a Sunday? And that should influence what you do the day before. So you should have your ritual routine that you do, that you know works well for you from a mental, physical point of view. Some of it might be a primer session, so explosive movements in the gym. Some of it might be a yoga session. Some of it might be a swim. Some of it might be nothing at all. Uh, some might be a, a long-distance jog. Um, whatever it is, what's going to work well for you is the right thing to do. So sticking to that and a routine that you know works for your game. Tayab, hopefully I pronounced that okay, I wrote the next one. I run every day. Is this bad? Uh, assuming you play football, I'll, I would say it's not, I mean, it's not bad. Yeah, I love the intent, mate, to get better and, and you're putting in the work. Um, I would just potentially think about the quality of your training without actually looking at your GPS or if you're tracking through your watch, what are, what are the type of sessions you're doing? Um, how sustainable is it? How long have you been running every day? Have you, are you having any um, soft tissue or overload type injuries like Oscan Slatus or, uh, or shin splints? Um, uh, but you know, patellofemoral sort of joint pain. Uh, so if your body's not responding well to it, then that's a sign that it could be bad for you. Or maybe your energy levels are down because you're overworking yourself and therefore the quality is dropping off of your football training. And ultimately, football is number one and our conditioning and strength need to complement the football. So yes, we need to be putting in hard work to get better over time with our athlete development. But if you're fatigued all year round, um, then you're not going to be cherry right where we want to be as a football, which is September, um, and that's what we want to be focusing on. So I typically on our program would have three to four running sessions a week, and I, and I would, wouldn't go much more than four times a week for, for anyone. So we'll start with the social fun 
element. And this one's really, really important, particularly uh, if you if you are if you've got a busy schedule, maybe you're studying and you're you're at work and you're trying to be the best footballer you can be. Uh, it's really, really important that you're dedicating time to having fun uh, and and being social as well with those that are close to you. So then we've got our football stress as our next one, and I alluded to a few of them. Um, the easiest way to work out how you're managing your football uh, demands on yourself is how much you're enjoying the process at the moment. So getting to football training, the actual football training itself, everything you're doing, including the potential training meetings, the reviews, if that if that's going on, and of course, the training itself. Then we've got our strength and conditioning stress. So how's your motivation at the moment when you're going into the gym? by yourself or maybe with to meet some mates to do your gym program. Um, how are you feeling if you're doing any top up running throughout the week or on the weekends? What's your motivation like to do that? Is it a drag or uh, is it just now something that you, you do with ease? Uh, are you finding yourself going through the motions when you're in the gym with the program or with your running? And this is something you want to try and avoid because it'll be junk lifting. It'll be junk running. You won't be intentional. You won't be present. You won't be focusing on, you know, moving as fast as possible, if that's the power focus of that lift or running with good rhythm. Um, and also you potentially might not be aware of your body not moving as optimally as it could be. Then we've got our school, uni or work stress. So we want to make sure that we're staying on top of our of these demands as best we can, because ultimately if you're um, feeling stress going into a game, it's going to be on your mind and it's going to distract you from your from being present on the field. And it's also going to lead with taking some energy out of your performance going into a game as well. So we want to make sure that you're getting into routine with your schooling and you're finding habits and routines that work for you to be able to stay on top of your uh, academic demand or work demand. So come game day, you can just be relaxed and focus all your energy on the game. Our power this week on that note is our primer day. So what we typically do at Prepare Like a Pro on our online program program the day before a game and we'll split our athletes into different areas we'll have our velocity play so those that do a lot of high speed running and high sprint efforts like small forwards small backs they'll be doing velocity based movements in the gym so uh, that think like acceleration um, med ball throws and maybe some light pogos so the session's pretty short it goes for anywhere 15 to, to 20 minutes and um, they're just getting uh, they're, they're practicing moving at a really, really fast pace. Uh, and we don't muck around with those movements too often. We keep them pretty consistent, so they're not going to have any muscles on us the next day going into the game. They feel primed and ready, ready to start strong, and, and they're connected to their body way off between Thursday on Friday. They're just moving at a fast pace. So for our power base players, they tend to like that. For our more key position or inside mids or strong strength strength based players, um, we've had success with lifting heavy the day before a game. So more upper body based movements like a bench pull or a prone row. They do low volume like four sets of four, um, and they might pair that with a fast movement like a med ball throw, and they basically just work up to a heavy set of four. So it might be four reps at 80, 85 percent, let's say, of their one rep max, um, and that help their strength and then in the contest the next day um and then for some that are aerobic power that really like to work up to a sweat doing a light uh, hit session the day before um then on the bike um things like 20 seconds on 40 seconds off where they just get some high repeat efforts um, make sure that's not running base they're not doing using a lot of high running because that might have a bit of a delayed muscle the next day or they might feel a bit of fatigue or might put them at a higher risk of injury so we're sticking to on the bike um it'll be another option but they're just practicing getting up to their gear getting their heart rate up a little bit and feeling from a point of view that they've done some work to help them uh, recover and um, mentally feel at ease going into sleep that night so for some players that's been quite effective so guys we're going to move to our power tip now for this week which will be how you can get an edge from a recovery perspective on your opponents by having a get better plan with your recovery. So if you're a developing athlete and you want to be the best footballer you can be, you want to look at 
what you're doing in your current schedule and how can you get an edge on your opponents that you, and also on yourself that you can improve on that potentially you weren't doing in the past. So what are some areas you can improve on? And one that I see all the time is recovery, only focusing on how you can f- have your muscles feel better or your energy, your body fatigue not being as low going into the next session. So things like going to the beach, pool, ice bath, these things. And all those these things are really important, like massage and your, fo- and your intent is in the right place and your attitude is great. And you're trying to improve your recovery to help your Um, physical state going into the next session what I want you to start adding to that routine is about five to ten minutes of improving your mobility with your recovery sessions so that way you're actually improving your athleticism over time you're not just focusing on the now but you're actually putting some time and energy into your future self which is going to pay dividends later on in your career and that's how we want to think about with the get better plan is you're going to be playing football for a long time with this approach so how can we maximize the time that we're putting into our body? And recovery sessions is one area that I think you can move the needle. Thank you for tuning in to this special episode. If you enjoy any of the content and you want more information, whether you're a high performance coach or you're a developing footballer, then check out our academy by going to propellacaproacademy.com.au. We have a very special 30 day trial for this episode and if you're interested direct messages on instagram or email me at jack at the and i'll hook you up with the coupon code this coupon code will expire at the end of january 2022 so make sure to act straight away see you guys in the academy